Let's take a look at this problem. We got 6x the fifth plus 23x the fourth plus 2x to the third minus 73x squared uh, minus 60x plus 12 is equal to 0. Now we're going to have five answers because the um, the fifth power, and um, it tells you tells you the steps to use here. But uh, I'm going to go through the steps that I teach. So let me go to the calculator and put it in. So I go to y equals clear six x to the fifth plus twenty three x to the fourth. plus 2x to the third minus 73 x squared minus 60x plus 12 and then I'll down arrow to y2 and put a zero there. Have to have a zero on y2 for this to work. Now I'll do second trace Choose intersect, so I'll choose 5. Now our answer is where it crosses the x-axis. Looks like maybe negative 2. But I'm going to do an inner on first curve, inner on second curve, and let me put in negative 2. So that's what I think my answer is. And then it comes back and tells me the intersection is x equals negative 2. So that's our first answer from the calculator. Next one looks like um, past zero, like a quarter or one third or something. So let me do second trace again. Choose intersect. Enter on first curve, enter on second curve, and I'll put zero in for the guess. And we get 0.1666667. To change decimal to fraction, we do a second mode to exit out, and you do math, enter, enter. And that tells us our second one is. 1, 6. Well, we got one more to find. So I'll do second trace. Choose intersect. Our answer is where it crosses the x-axis. I see it crosses at three places. So this next one looks like 2. So we do enter our first curve, enter our second curve, and I'll put 2 in for the guess, and press enter. And that doesn't look like it's going to switch to a... Um, That doesn't look like it'll switch to a uh, fraction, but let me try it. So a second mode, math, enter, enter. It doesn't. Okay, so that makes me wonder, is there something else there? Second trace, choose intersect. Huh, not seeing anything, so maybe our answers repeat. Let's try it and just see what we get. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to I'll put, let me plug in the 1, 6. So I got 6, 23, 2, negative 73, negative 60, and 12. These are our largest powers, x to the fifth, so real small. Here's x to the fifth, here's x to the fourth, here's x to the third. Here's x squared, here's x, and here's our no x, or constant term. And I just wrote down the numbers in front of each one of those. That's where those came from. Now we're going to go through a series of adding, multiplying over and over until we're done. So 6 plus nothing 6. Then we multiply. You always multiply by a number in a box, but I'm going to be put down here. 1, 6 times 6 is 1. Then add. 23 plus 1 is 24. And then multiply. Always number in a box, but I'm going to be put down there. 1, 6 times 4, or 1, 6 times 24 is 4. Add. 2 plus 4 is 6. Multiply. 1, 6 times 6 is 1. Add. Negative 73 plus 1 is negative 72. Multiply. 1, 6 times negative 72 is negative 12. Add. Negative 60, negative 12 is negative 72. Multiply. 1, 6 times negative 72 is negative 12. 
and add, and we get a zero. That zero there means you found an answer, which is not surprising because the calculator told you is an answer. So x equals one six is one of our answers. Now we're down to x to the fourth level. Let's plug in our other answer, negative two. So I'll add, multiply, always number in a box, but I'm going to put down here. Negative two, negative two times six is negative twelve. Add, multiply, add, uh, what is that, negative eighteen? Multiply, that's thirty-six, so we get negative thirty-six. Multiply, and add, and we get another zero. Means x equals negative two is our second answer. Now what I'm wondering is I'm wondering if negative two is our third answer. Um, because we're now down to x to the third. And typically they give you enough answers to get you down to x squared. So let me plug in negative two and see if that's see if it works. So I'll add, we'll multiply, we'll add, we'll multiply, we'll add, we'll multiply, we'll add. And we do get a zero, which means x equals negative two is our second answer. Why did I try negative two versus one six? It's because of the graph. See how the the one six uh, passed straight through there, where this one at negative two did kind of a little little jaunt, the little curve there. If it passes straight straight through there, then it pretty well doesn't repeat. Now, question might be if it re is negative 2 repeat again. Let me just show that it doesn't. If I plug in negative 2, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, and you see that our remainder is not 0. Remainder 0 means we found an answer. So it doesn't repeat, doesn't work again. But that's okay. Is, uh, each answer we find takes it down one more power. So first answer took it to the x to the fourth, next one took it to the x to the third, we're now down to x squared, and then this would be x, and this would be no x. So we're left with 6x squared minus 18 equal to 0. Whenever your middle term's missing, the x part, then you can use the square root property. So I'm going to get the part to squared by itself. So I'll take negative 18 to the right side, divide both sides by 6, then we get x squared is equal to 3. And the square root property says you drop your squared and you put a plus or minus square root around the other side. Now, fundamental theorem of algebra says your large power tells you how many answers you're going to have. So this x of fifth means we're going to have five answers. And uh, we found a couple of them from the calculator, and then we got this one because it repeated. And then we use the square root property to get our last two answers. Plus or minus means there's two answers there. So that's our five answers.